A question I've been asked a number of times. What do you think of the plan for a mosque in New York City near Ground Zero? Isn't it private property and therefore protected by individual rights and, and no one has the right to interfere? Now, I don't take concrete political issues like this, but in this case, it is an issue of, of such ramifications that I just can't uh, ignore it. I also <clears throat> am going to uh, lie to you or deceive you in this way, uh, not in the content of what I say, but in the manner. Uh, left to my own devices, I would be enraged and spout off all the way through my answer on the wickedness of the people who believe this or the non-knowledge of the people who agree with them. But I asked for the questions and therefore, uh, if I take it, when well, nobody forced me, i got to be calm, just as if it was any other question. So do not let my manner deceive you as to my opinion, my evaluation. Let's start with property rights. Property rights are limited, and they are uh, contextual. You cannot do anything you want with property, even though it is yours, not if its ramifications objectively entail a threat to the rights of others. You can't build a bomb in your home. You can't even build a big bonfire in your backyard legitimately because the principle of rights is that property rights are a derivative of life as the standard. And there can be no right to threaten anyone's life, nor indeed to threaten anyone's uh, property. Second, rights are contextual. In any situation where metaphysical survival is at stake, all property rights are out. You have no obligation to respect property rights. The obvious uh, classic example of this is which I've been asked a hundred times. You swim to a desert island, you know, you had a shipwreck, and you get to the shore, and uh, the guy comes to you and he says, I got a fence all around this island. I found it. It's legitimately mine. You can't step onto the beach. Now, in that situation, you are in a literal position of being metaphysically helpless. Since life is the standard of rights, if you no longer can survive this way, rights are out and it becomes dog eat dog or force against uh, force. Now, don't assume that any unsatisfied uh, need therefore puts you in this metaphysical category. For instance, you're very poor and you're hungry. Well, you need food. But in a, a capitalist society, or even in a mixed economy, that is not a metaphysical deprivation. There's always all sorts of choices and ways in, the, in a free society uh, for you to uh, gain food. Always. All right, now let's apply this to f the foreign relations issue. The context today is that we are at war, and not a cold war, a real war. Uh, we are facing uh, widespread terrorism, sponsored by a number of governments with tremendous popular backing uh, in, uh, in virtually every Mideast uh, uh, Islamic uh, uh, country. Even Turkey, the, the one priding itself on its secularism, has now gone uh, Islamic. Now, the United States response, the Western response to this, is a continuation of the appeasement that was started back in the 50s under Eisenhower when Iran seized a Western oil company. Uh, uh, the uh, Americans, the British, and the Israelis, as I remember, launched an attack to try to reclaim it, and, uh, uh, or at least the British and the Israeli did, and Eisenhower vetoed it. And since that point, there's been more and more and more craven appeasement 
uh, by the West. And across 50 years, the, uh, the uh, audacity and the scope of outrage of the uh, Islamic uh, uh, world, I mean by that the activists, the militants, the terrorists, and their countless followers, they have continually upped the deaths, the assaults, the horror, while the U.S. has in continually upped its uh, appeasement. And of course, the appeasement includes the pretense of a war, which consists of bombing uh, empty fields and letting innocent American soldiers be slaughtered because we mustn't harm uh, 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 the lampposts uh, or, the, or the people down the street. The government under this present individual is not even allowed to use the word terrorist anymore, let alone to suggest that Muslims are involved. Uh, he's just continuing Bush's policy. Bush's first speech after 9-11 was that, of course, Islam and Islamics and people who believe in Islam have nothing whatever to do with it. It's just a tiny lunatic fringe. Uh, and so uh, Bush had a non-policy in the same way that uh, Obama does. Uh, and uh, since there is no enemy, uh, and it's correct, terrorist is a stupid word because terror is a tactic. It's not a, an idea. So we have no identified uh, enemy and uh, uh, no war, nothing except, and you notice that if anything happens, anything at all, uh, you know, that, that would suggest uh, 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 some kind of violent act, uh, uh, the first thing that the authorities say is it's not terrorism. It's not a foreign uh, policy incident. And then when they finally uh, discover, uh, they say, well, it's, a, it's an exceptional case and we have to investigate and we have to have a special trial in New York City, which will take 13 years and we have to give him lawyers. It's, it's, it's just historically unbelievable that the, the worse the enemy becomes, the weaker uh, the United States becomes. Now, it, it should be obvious that there is no end to this, no final result, <clears throat> and not too far from now in time, before there will be Islamic devastation or even takeover of a paralyzed United States. Now, I know that seems uh, fantastic, and it's still fantastic today. But ask yourself in 1990, if you were alive then, what people thought the reaction would be to 9-11, and then what it actually was. You just project by degrees what's going to happen. Now, the proper reply to the whole evil of terrorism, Islamic fundamentalism, if you want to call it that, would be to state the right morality firmly, the morality of the founding fathers, declare war on the appropriate state. Now, that's a different topic, but I would say you have to start with Iran, give notice, and bomb Tehran as a beginning. But we can't do that but right now the question is, what should we do in this case? Now, in my view, in this context, any objective, not what could be subjectively taken one way or the other, but any objective sign of our weakness, it is immoral and catastrophic for Americans uh, to permit it insofar as they, ha as they could stop or weaken the effort to it. And the mosque is absolutely a textbook example of this. There is only one objective message 